Hey guys, so as you know, over the past couple weeks, I've been working on our solar system. I've added some uh, surge protectors from Midnight Solar. I had to replace our inverter due to a malfunction. It was replaced under warranty. And while I was doing that, I was realizing there's got to be a better way to disconnect the batteries from the inverter. And up to this point, I've always just taken the fuse out right here, which works, of course. But there is a better way, and it's a battery disconnect. So today I'm going to install this battery disconnect right here on the negative line of the, uh, of the cable going from the batteries up to the inverter. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing to do is, of course, disconnect all the power by throwing all the breaker switches. And once that's complete, the next step was to remove the 120 amp fuse that runs between the batteries and the inverter and is hooked up, as you can see, to the red positive cable. This is the reason for installing the switch in the first place to eliminate this necessary step in the future. So once that's removed, I had to borrow a large hex, uh, hex wrench from Handyman to remove that negative cable. And of course, the negative cable runs up into this switch gear box, and once the switch gear box cover is removed, I can disconnect the control panel that you see on the lower portion of the switch gear box and then remove the negative cable from the negative bus bar. Now that negative cable is held on with a bolt as well as a nut from the back side. And if there's one thing I could say about the Schneider design, it's not, uh, not that user-friendly. It's sometimes hard to reach in there, and I don't have real big hands, but it's sometimes hard to get in there and maneuver things around. So it makes it a little problematic, but I got it done. Now I've marked already on the cable where I want to install the switch, so I'm going to remove that cable and head over to the tent. I know, save the comments. Now this is my first time ever making battery cables like this. And what I did was watched a couple YouTube videos and I opted for a crimper that is uh, that's that's uh, made with the crimp is actually made by striking a hammer onto the uh, crimping tool. Now cutting back the insulation here was relatively easy. The strands inside this battery cable are pretty thick, so it wasn't much of a danger of shredding any of the strands inside. And I do have some uh, heat shrink that is also uh, has a, an adhesive on the inside. And that lug will get, uh, get crimped onto there using this crimp tool. But first I gotta make the other side. Don't forget the shrink, heat shrink. There you go. Now you can attach that to the uh, that that tool to the workbench with a couple nails. I opted not to. I probably should have. You can also use it, from what I understand, in a vise, and I might try that next time using a small lighter propane lighter to shrink the tubing 
and it made a secure clean install. So overall, I'm happy. That little, uh, that little crimping tool ran about 20 bucks from Amazon. Now it's just a question of attaching both ends of the wire that I just uh, spliced onto the switch. Making sure that it's oriented properly. Now attaching the second side, and once this is hooked up, it'll be ready to be installed. Okay, let's head back to the solar shed. Now I'm just feeding the one end back up into the switch gear box and finding the right location for the switch. Sorry about my camera orientation. It's not the best. I wish this standoff bus bar that I'm attaching the cable to right now gave me the ability to at make a, an attachment using a lug, but it doesn't. It uh, is a large hex screw that is made to, or designed, I should say, to crimp down on the bare wire without a lug. It makes a secure connection. Now that I've got uh, that connected, I'm going to use four screws, locate the switch where I want it to be, try to make sure that it's straight, and then uh, after that's secure, it'll be time to go back up into the switch gear box and get that last cable attached. And again, the tricky part of this is just getting the nut on the back side of the negative bus bar. Just all very tight. But it gets done. And once I have the, uh, the nut threaded on, I switch over to a ratchet so I can make a secure connection. And what you don't see in this video clip is uh, after I got done doing this, I went back there with a small pair of needle nose pliers to hold that nut secure. I gave it another couple turns. So let's place the cover back on. Plug in the, uh, the, com the control panel and replace the four screws holding the front panel on to the switch gear. Now replacing the fuse, and again, this is the whole point of this project is to avoid having to remove the fuse every time I want to work on the system. In the future, I'll be able to use the battery disconnect switch. Okay, so the switch is installed. I've thrown the breakers on, forgot to get the 60 volt, 60 amp. Now all the breakers are on, everything's working as it should, and now in the future if I ever want to disconnect the batteries from the inverter, I'll just rotate this switch. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.